Honorable uh, Speaker, it's very unfortunate that this thing is happening. And um, as you said, we have the numbers, especially chairs and vice chairs. And uh, I think uh, I want to be very categorical that they have lacked sense of responsibility. And, and it's I, not that you don't have choices, you do. Yes, we have choices. And I think, Honorable Speaker, I can assure you, as we approach the next session of Parliament, we'll crack the whip on uh, our chairs and vice chairs so that uh, we, 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 we ensure that uh, as we come back after recess, we do not have this kind of a problem. Thank it you. also embarrasses us as, as, as leadership. Yes. McLab, the speaker doesn't need any help on this. Take your seat. <laughs> Take your seat. Uh, Clark, call. Order number one, administration of oath. Order number two, communication from the chair. Order number three, messages. Order number four, petitions. Moses Krima. Honorable Moses Krima. Thank you, Mr. Speaker, sir. Mr. Speaker, I beg to petition uh, this Honorable House on behalf of one Mr. Gerard Mulikiro, a citizen or a, a resident of Central Imenti. Mr. Speaker, sir, I, the undersigned on behalf of one Gerard Mulikiro, descending in Central Imenti constituency, draw the attention of this Honorable House to the following. That through a letter dated that 1st January 2005, one Mr. Gerard Mulikiru was wrongly terminated by Absa Bank, formerly the Bankers Bank of Kenya Limited. That Absa Bank claimed that in the course of duty, Mr. Gerard Mulikiru incurred a loss of Kenya shillings, 149,000 Kenya shillings, which was borrowed from him by the then literal manager in the same bank that on the spot investigations done on that 10th November 2004 by the senior literal manager revealed that Mr. Njera and Murikilu and a shortage of only Kenya shillings 366 and 10 cents. That Mr. Njera and Murikilu launched a trade dispute with the Minister of Labor and Social Protection who recommended that he be reinstated without loss of benefits on breaking years of service be paid 10 months gross salary as compensation for the wrongful or unfair termination and any other relief the management would deem it fit in the judgment dated 7th February 2008. That the petitioner is a victim of witch hunting, discrimination, intimidation, nepotism and malice. That the matter presented in this petition is not pending before any court of law or any other constitutional or legal body. Therefore, your humble petition appraises that the, the National Assembly, through the Public Petition Committee, inquire into the dismissal of Mr. Gerard Murikilu by Absa Bank, formerly the Bankers Bank of Kenya Limited. Recommend that Absa Bank consider reinstating the petitioner without loss or breaking years of service and makes any other recommendations or action it deems fit in addressing the plight of the petitioner. And your petitioner will ever play. Thank you, Mr. Speaker, sir. Thank you, Honorable Kirima Daoud. Honorable Daoud. Th uh, thank you, Mr. Speaker. Mr. Speaker, I want to support the petition by Honorable Kirima regarding Mr. Gerald. M Mr. Speaker, the amount involved is so petty that somebody can ha have a mistake in the daily accounts, the ones he receives uh, in the bank. And I think the APSA bank should have been more considerate uh, with Mr. Gerald and should unequivocally 
reinstate Mr. Gerald with his benefits because 361 shillings uh, difference in the takings should not be a reason to be dismissed. So I join um, Honorable Kirema in this petition. Atandi, you want to speak to this? Thank you, Honorable Speaker. Honorable Speaker, let me first of all thank Gerald for being courageous enough to bring this matter to this house. Honorable Speaker, a lot of Kenyans working in private sector, especially in banks, suffer a lot under some of these conditions that are humiliating, and they are unable to raise these matters because they fear that if these matters come to the limelight, they will never be able to get jobs elsewhere. Because in the financial sector, once you are deemed to have been fired in one bank, you can't get a job in the next bank. So, Madam uh, Honorable Speaker, this is very, uh, very uh, courageous of him. And Honorable Speaker, the committee that is going to look at this matter must do thorough investigations. Madam uh, Honorable Speaker, this is the only country where uh, international companies can easily fire uh, locals without uh, even any action taken on them. And this happens every day, my Honorable Speaker. So this is a time this House also looked at another aspect that we don't look at very seriously, where international uh, staff working in banks, international banks, doing jobs that can be done by Kenyans. You find an expatriate coming here to do a job which is, can be done by Kenyans, and, and we don't take this matter seriously. So, my, uh, Honorable Speaker, let the committee go deeper into this matter and investigate many other cases of this nature. Thank you. Thank you, Honorable Speaker. Thank you. Next order. Sorry, sorry. I've not committed the petition. The, the petition is committed to the uh, Public Petitions Committee to report back in uh, 60 days, as is required under the standing orders. Is the chair here? Oh, and buy a job. It's your job. I'm not asking you to say anything, but you can see. Yes. And the order paper is normally circulated. The chairman know that matters relating to their jurisdiction are coming, and they are not here. Next order. Inform your chairman for public petitions and encourage uh, members. Honorable members, we are not trying to be hard on you. It's your duty to be in this house. You are elected to be in this house. And I can tell you, you are truly here for all my years in Parliament. The Speaker found me in Parliament. When the Speaker left, I followed him when he's leaving. Every single day. And it never affected my election back home. So don't say that you are in the constituents when you are supposed to be in the house. You must be here. Next order. Order number five, papers. Majority Leader. Thank you, Honorable Speaker. Honorable Speaker, I beg to lay the following papers on the table of the House today, Tuesday, 21st November 2023. One, legal notice number 186 of 2023 relating to revision of the laws, rectification order 2023, and the explanatory mandatory from the Office of the Attorney General. Second, Annual Report of the Victim Protection Board for the Financial Year 2022-2023 from the Office of the Attorney General. Three, Quarterly Economic and Budgetary Review Report for Financial Year 2023-2024 from the National Treasury. Four, Annual Report of the National Land Commission for the Financial Year 2022-2023 from the National Land Commission. Five, Annual Audited Report of the Kenya Industrial Property Institute for the Financial Year 2021-2022 from the Minister of Investment, Trade and Industry. Six, the biannual report on the status of alcohol and drug abuse control in Kenya, 17th edition, covering from the period of July to December 2022 from the Minister of Interior and National Administration. Seven, reports of the Auditor General on financial statements for the year ended 30th June 2023 and certificates therein in respect of the following. De-risking inclusion and value enhancement of pastoral economics drive project, Enable Youth Kenya program, Samata Wajia Road project, Merile Marsabit Road rehabilitation project, 
East Africa Skills Transformation and Regional Integration Project, State Department for Roads, and lastly, Honorable Speaker, Africa Environmental Health and Pollution Management Project, EHPMP. I thank you, Honorable Speaker, and I beg to lay. Thank you, Majority Leader. Before we call the next order, Honorable Members, allow me to acknowledge in the Speaker's Gallery I wish to introduce to you a delegation of six staff from the Department of Official Reports in the Parliament of Uganda. Honorable members, they are on a visit to the National Assembly to learn about the production of timely and accurate verbatim reports of the proceedings of Parliament in the Directorate of Hansard and Audio Services. On my behalf and that of the National Assembly, I welcome them and wish them fruitful engagement during their stay in the country. Thank you. In the public gallery, we have University of Nairobi Students Association, Nyanza chapter, from various constituencies and various counties. Again, on your behalf and my own behalf, we welcome them to the House of Parliament. Thank you. Next order. Order number six. Notices of motion. The member for Mandera South, Honorable Abdul Haro. Honorable Speaker, pass one to studying order 33 1. I seek leave for the adjournment of the House for purposes of discussing a definite matter of urgent national importance regarding the current severe El Nino crisis and its devastating effects, particularly in Mandera County. Honorable Speaker, the adverse effects of the El Nino crisis are significantly impacting a lot of critical facets of our country. The rains are disrupting the ongoing national exams for students with potential long-term consequences on the education and future prospects of students. In Mandera County, numerous schools are also being utilized as refugee shelters, posing challenges to both the displaced individuals and the educational institutions involved. Some vital healthcare facilities, including hospitals, are submerged, rendering them inaccessible. This has unfortunately left the affected population without access to medical assistance in the wake of dangerous outbreak of diseases. Honorable Speaker, it is disheartening to note that private individuals have had to step in actively to engage in rescue and relief efforts underlying the urgency and the gravity of the situation. The current death toll stands at 46 with over 14 reported injuries and the potential for further casualties is imminent if immediate action is not taken. Honorable Speaker, it is against this background that I seek leave for adjournment of the House to discuss this matter of great national concern with a view to exploring possible and long-lasting solutions. Thank you, Honorable Speaker. Do you have the requisite support? <laughs> the support is overwhelming. Honorable members, you may take your seats. You may take your seats now. Honorable member for... Mandera Central, order honorable members, order honorable Bowen and your group. Honorable members, I direct that uh, having garnered the requisite support numbers, this motion of adjournment will be moved at the end of the business at order number 12 or at 5.30, whichever comes earlier. Are we together, Honorable Member? At the end of the business at order number 12, or at 5.30, whichever comes earlier. Next order. Order number seven, questions and statements. Next. Order number eight, procedural motion. Reduction of 
publication period of a specified bill. Chairperson, Budget and Appropriations Committee. Thank you very much, uh, Honorable Speaker. Honorable Speaker, I wish to move that pursuant to the provisions of Standing Order 120, that this House resolves to reduce the publication period of the supplementary appropriations, appropriation number three bill, National Assembly Bill number 71 of 2023, from seven days to four days. And Honorable Speaker, the essence of this, as the uh, members are aware, there is nothing much happening in, in, in regards to government, and that is affecting actually this house just like any other agency of government. Because when there is a um, process like the one we are undertaking now for supplementary estimates, as members are aware, the system of government, famously known as IFMIS, usually does not operate. And the reason for this, Honorable Speaker, is usually because some of the effects we are making on the budget, some MDS could proceed, for example, to expect the money, monies probably which have already been proposed for cuts. So the essence of actually locking, in quotes, the IFMIS, is usually for tidiness of government financials, because the process we are undertaking now is to vary the budget. And we cannot now be expending the same monies that we are varying. So the essence of this motion is for us to be able to conclude the debate in regards to appropriations bill today and henceforth then conclude the matter of supplementary estimate so that then we can free up resources to go into our CDF, to go into our roads, to go into our water, for parliament to operate and any other uh, government agency. And Honorable Speaker, I request the very eloquent member for Kirenyaga, Honorable Jerry, to second. Eloquence here. Yes, speaker, I, <laughs> I rise to second and I thank uh, my very good friend and uh, role model to many of the young politicians, Honorable Ndindi Nyoro, the member for Kiharu. Uh, Honorable Speaker, indeed, we need um, the country to be able to operate and I am seeking that once um, this is done, Treasury releases the funds with immediate effect so that we can um, get back to work. Thank you, Honorable Speaker. Thank you, Njeri. Honorable members, I now propose the question that pursuant to the provision of Standing Order 120, this House resolves to reduce the publication period of the supplementary appropriation number three bill, National Assembly Bill number 71 of 2023, from seven days to four days. Is that the mood of the House? I now put the question, which is that pursuant to the provision of Standing Order 120, this House resolves to reduce the publication period of the supplementary appropriation number three bill, National Assembly Bill number 71 of 2023 from seven days to four days. As members of that opinion say aye. aye. Will those of the contrary opinion say nay? The ayes have it. Order, Honorable Mwenje, before we declare you whip, you are fighting to sit on the front bench. <laughs> now that we have done so, <laughs> you have shifted to the back bench. Okay, next order. Order number nine, the supplementary appropriation number three bill, National Assembly Bill number 71 of 2023, first reading, an act of parliament, a bill for an act of parliament to authorize the issue of certain sums of money out of the consolidated fund and the application towards the service of the year ending on the 30th June 2024 and to, ap to appropriate those sums for certain public services and purposes. Next order. Order number 10, the supplementary appropriations number three bill, National Assembly Bill number 71 of 2023. Second reading. 
Chairman, Budget and Appropriations Committee, Honorable Ndindi Nyoro. Thank you very much, uh, Honorable Speaker. Honorable Speaker, okay. I wish to move that the supplementary appropriations number three bill, National Assembly Bill number 71 of 2023, be read for a second time. And Honorable Speaker, as members are aware, last week we robustly debated the report of the Budget and Appropriations Committee in regards to the supplementary estimates. And therefore, I'll just highlight just but a few of the issues that are already here in this supplementary, uh, uh, in this bill, of the uh, supplementary appropriations bill, that is supplementary one of 2023. And Honorable Speaker, I was able to appraise the members of the fact that the essence of this supplementary budget that we are currently debating today and hopefully conclude by end of this session, the reason why we had to do this supplementary budget at this time is primarily hedged on only three things. One of the critical things that we are doing in rearranging government financials in this supplementary estimates one, the main thing was the repayment of interest rates of the obligations that we owe both domestically and externally. And Honorable Speaker, as members are aware, we passed the budget, the main budget in, in, in uh, June. But from June to date, there has been dynamics across the money markets. And the money markets are the ones that affect the cost of money. One Honorable Speaker is that we have seen a rise or increase in interest rates here locally, as we have seen increase in um, uh, foreign or global interest rates. And Honorable Speaker, most of our foreign debt is dollar denominated. And even to start with a global figure about our debt, is that Kenya give or take us around 10 point something trillion Kenya shillings in debt. And out of which 50% of that debt is foreign. Most of the foreign debt is dollar denominated. Honorable Speaker, from January to date, our local currency, the cash, has lost over 21%. Uh, over 21 and therefore, in consequence, what that means is that around 4.3 trillion Kenya shillings that we owed by the beginning of this year has been able to escalate to around 5.3 trillion, majority of which is not money that we have borrowed, but just the variations in our local currency in regards to the, uh, the, the, the dollar, which is a, a denomination that is used in most of our borrowing. And therefore, the essence of the money that we are enhancing is basically to be able to provide for that. 145 billion Kenya shillings in this supplementary budget is going to just enhance the payment of our interest rates, both domestically and also in terms of foreign debt. Honorable Speaker, some members, and uh, it's, it's important that I clarify. Why do we have to keep up on raising our interest rates as a country? Why is T-bills now having much more yield than they were having in June? Honorable Speaker, when we are uh, looking at the economy and looking at something we call barriers of payment, barriers of payment has two components. One is in the current account that records the net imports, that is the X minus M. But then there is another one that records capital inflows minus the capital outflows. Now what happens is that when the other global interest rates are rising, if the current or the low domestic interest rates that does not go in tandem, then what happens, Honorable Speaker, is that we make other economies more attractive for investment. And that is why Kenya cannot be isolated. When the global interest rates are rising, Kenya also raises so that we can also attract capital inflows within the country. That is one of the reasons we had to raise um, uh, uh, or, or to increase our budget 
in this supplementary budget. Secondly, Honorable Speaker, is that when we are doing the budgeting for a country, we use financial years. That is from June to June. But when the country is doing other arrangements, for example, education, we do that cognizant of the calendar year. And therefore, Honorable Speaker, one of the other reasons that we did this supplementary budget in regards to figures is that we needed to capacitate our education sector by capitalizing it more. So what we have done in that regard, Honorable Speaker, is that we have added close to, not close to, but over 70 billion Kenya shillings into our education sector. Honorable Speaker, it is important that I let the members know that our education sector currently is taking up 700 billion Kenya shillings of our budget, which is commendable, Honorable Speaker, because these are monies that are going into uh, the tomorrow of our, uh, of our country. And Honorable Speaker, this is an investment. Honorable Speaker, out of that money that is going to education, 5.4 billion Kenya shillings is going into JSS capitation because we are adding much more money into JSS so that parents do not have to cough money out of their pockets come January and especially for those who will be joining JSS in January. Honorable Speaker, secondly, we have been able to add over 20 billion Kenya shillings into our higher education. Honorable Speaker, we have, capaci we have capitalized our help more to be able to give loans to higher education students and also to provide scholarships to higher education students and especially universities. Honorable Speaker, also we have added over 5 billion Kenya shillings into our TVET. This money is going into payments of scholarships also to TVET students. Honorable Speaker, there is something I also want members to put a keen listening ear on. Honorable Speaker, in education, and Honorable Speaker, it's important for members to note, we have added an extra 3.4 billion Kenya shillings into JSS infrastructure, that is laboratories, and that is uh, other infrastructure related to JSS. And something we have done is that we have moved this money from the Ministry of, of Education. In this appropriations bill, if you check 3.4 billion Kenya shillings we removed from the Ministry of Education and we took that money to the Department of Planning so that that money goes to...